Hello everyone, my name is Web Weaver, and welcome back to another episode of World of Horror. So, what is it that we are doing today? Uh, probably just a random run of some kind that I will think of right now and then opt into. Um, I don't think the uh, new balance change thing came out today. I, I at least don't think so. The It's still uh, 0.9.9D. I don't know if that was going to change in the... In the main menu, the patch notes are still the same thing. So... Not to... I don't think the update's out yet. But, uh... Anyways, what are we gonna do today? I don't know. We will... You know what? I've been thinking about it. We're gonna play Mizuki Gaming. Yes, we're gonna play Mizuki Gaming. Haven't done this in a hot minute. I think what we'll go ahead and do is we're gonna try to get a lot of allies, which, I mean, you know, pretty normal, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Definitely not taking, uh, definitely not taking Seventh Curse. That would be, <laughs> that would be not great. We'll do medical history. We haven't done a Mizuki medical history in a while. I'm pretty sure. I think that's what I said the last time I played Mizuki. <laughs> Absolutely gobsmacked. True. I think we'll go ahead and do a little gazoo. There was a... Somebody posted a picture a while back of, like, old Goizo. And it was Gozo. And I'm just like, this thing. I love it. The Gozo. <laughs> The Bozo, I love it. I think Gazoo is still probably the best Goizo spelling, but I don't know. I do not know. Also, have y'all seen, like... I, I know they're really prevalent and all that, so you most likely have seen them. But there's so many fucking Family Guy YouTube shorts. Like, I'll, I'll click on a YouTube short for, like, Warhammer or something. And then I'll flip down, or it will autoplay the next one, or whatever. And it'll be like, it'll be a Family Guy one. And then I'll flip down, and it'll be another Family Guy one. And it'll flip down, and it'll be another Family Guy one. And the thing is, I think Family Guy was actually like designed for YouTube shorts. Because Family Guy humor is so random and disjointed and disconnected you'll have a scene that will be serving a larger narrative purpose for the episode, and then one of the characters will go like, eh, this is just like that time. This is just like that time I did some stupid thing, and then it'll be like a cutaway gag. Was that a good Peter laugh? I don't know. I, I, I haven't tried to do like a, a, a Peter laugh thing in a while. Or like a giggle? I don't know. Anyways, we've got your seconds, we've got strength, we've got dexterity. And we've got a light source, which is pretty interesting. I feel like you could probably get away with... We'll go ahead and do school nurse, I think. But I'm not entirely sure. I mean, we could check to see if the illegal den is updated, because if, um, if this is the update, which I don't think it is, you'll be able to buy allies at the illegal den. And so that makes the illegal den, like, good, I guess. But then I have to think of, like, what weapon do I actually want? And then it's like, well, I don't know. I don't really want to use a brick, but I guess we can. Like, do a little dexterity build? Not so sure about that. But we'll see. We'll see. Because I, I don't really want to do illegal den and monument. I, I want, like... I'm gonna be honest, I was thinking the monkey wrench, because we need to get that strength up anyways, so we might as well. We could do like a carpenter hammer. Yeah, yeah, let's do a carpenter hammer or a monkey wrench. Whatever we see first. I did want to look at the illegal den, but there, there are probably some other things we could check out to see. See what we got going on there. Uh, we'll, we'll be a star. We will be a star. True and real. All right. So I am thinking, I I'm thinking, all right? I I I'm looking at this run so far and I'm like, eh, you know, it it's got i uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. Evolving eels won't say no to that. 
But, you know, y you go here. We didn't get any doom. We did not get any doom. So there you go. Fearful, all right. The, whenever you see fearful, insomnia. That's the uh, translation you gotta make in your head. Do I want to get this? Just, I mean, it's good. I'm not gonna say no to this. I like it a lot. You know what? Let's let's go ahead. It, it's not ideal, but I think it's fine. So, I do have an update on the Howling Banshees, all right? So, I did get screwed because the Exarch and the regular Howling Banshee one share the same shit, but they also... <laughs> they, they share the same set of legs, but there's only one set of legs, and it doesn't tell you that in the book. Or it might, but I, it, I don't think it does, because it has, like, a an emblem on the Exarch that says, please read carefully, but it's like, th there's nothing that indicates that your later decision will be made, uh, like, bad if you try to build the Exarch and Howling Banshee one. Like, I don't think it tells you that. At least not in Blood of the Phoenix, it doesn't. However, you know, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to take it lying down. You know, I built, a. Uh, a Howling Banshee, and it, it and she just didn't have a backplate. That's the only thing that she didn't have. So I had to get something that would be a backplate, essentially. And what I ended up going with was I grabbed an old Necron backplate from, like, an old, really old warrior's box uh, from, like, probably, like, eight years ago. Uh, and so, you know, when we did that, I filed it down a lot, clipped off some of the shoulder pads, uh, cl clipped off some of the inside, like, carved it a lot with a knife, uh, filed it down, clipped some excess parts off. It, it was a lot of fiddling with it, but I got it to fit pretty well. And, I mean, <laughs> listen, some people... If I ever play Eldar, some people are probably gonna notice that one of my Howling Banshees has a Necron shoulder pad. But you know what? That's fine. I don't care anymore. I'm gonna do a little bit more green stuff. I let... I had to use green stuff to fill it in to keep the head in place because the head has a peg on it and uh, I wanted the body to actually stick together. So I let that... I got that into the shape I wanted it, filled the gaps with green stuff, let it dry overnight. I don't know if I'm going to do milliput or more green stuff, but I want to add like a little detail. Just a tiny one. It'll be obscured, but I don't want it to just be like a relatively flat green stuff surface. I want it to have a little bit of like an edge to it. So I want to add a, like a tiny, just a, a minuscule amount. And uh, we really did get here, huh? Yeah, we really did. True. Now, the good thing is we can immediately get this taken care of. Imme immediately, instantaneously, in fact. But, uh, you know, it's not great. So, I just have my backplate. So here's the thing that you might be a little confused about. Is so, I think I've explained this a few times, but I don't know how well I've explained it. You basically are in a situation where you're using something called plastic cement, right? So plastic cement, what it does is it melts two parts of plastic together. Oh, that's fantastic. You'll love to see that. So it basically, you'll, you'll have one, one flat surface of plastic and another flat surface of plastic. You'll put the plastic cement on it and you'll put them together and then that will melt the surfaces of both of those plastic sides and then they will fuse together. Uh, it's not perfect, and it can definitely, things can snap off, things can break, that sort of thing. However, for the most part, it works like a charm, and I like it more than super glue. The problem is that super, if you don't like super glue, you can just put the model in the freezer and then snap it off. You can snap the joint off, you can get a knife, you can put the knife in between the joint where the super glue is, cut the crystal part of the super glue out. However... It's not so easy 
It's not so easy with plastic glue, all right? It's easier to get rid of super glue than it is plastic glue, at least in my opinion, or at least in my personal experience. There might be some trick that I don't know. But, uh... So I was looking at that, and, you know, I was just, like, no thoughts, head empty. I was watching a show while I was putting the models together. So I just got the front chest piece, which was the Betrayer, the, uh, the Exarch part two chess piece and I glued it to one of the back plates and so I ended up with one less back plate and then I realized that none of the legs that I had fit and then that was really bad and it was like oh shit so what do I do what ended up happening we do need a light source I'm not gonna say no So, you know, I, I just ended up gluing the back plate to the front plate that is incompatible. I don't know why Games Workshop lets you do it. I, would, I wouldn't be able to tell you, all right? They're, they're, I would not be able to tell you whatsoever why they do that. Second enemy, by the way, Vengeful Athlete, Ritsuko-chan herself. But yeah, that's what Games Workshop does. You, you glue the back... Like, there are two bodies that are and here's the thing the idea is very simple and you normally would never make a mistake like this because there's five models that you can build and all five models have different legs that are specifically compatible with their different front chest piece because it's like the the front chest piece and the back are two different parts and the legs connect to the front of the chest it's a little bit weird but uh, it makes sense if you've seen the models, right? Like, they're leaping off of a, of a piece of terrain, and so, you know, they're kind of like, they got their bodies forward, just kind of like jumping, you know? Something like that. It, it, the sculpt makes sense. The sculpts look really good. And the sculpts are really good. Uh, they're great to work with. Uh, some of the mold lines were in annoying spots. Doesn't really matter, right? Now, here's the deal. Here, here's the thing that was annoying, okay? is if all five of them have different legs and then you include two bodies which are the ones that the instruction booklet tells you to use first and then you go on to find out that because you glued those two front plates in first now admittedly admittedly it is, the instructions are Banshee independent. There are some instruction manuals for GW that will tell you, repeat this step uh, as many times as you, as uh, you know, there are like whatever, right? Like you need to repeat this step, like for this part would be five times. But the Howling Banshees are all individual. They all have their own instructions on about one to two pages. The problem is that if you're following it like a rule book, you open it up, you see a, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce her name. The the scary one with the glaive and the giant halberd. Uh, the, the character. Jan? Jane? You know, you see her, you put her together, you flip the page. Exarch. Boom. You build the Exarch. Flip the page. Howling Banshee 1. You build Howling Banshee 1. Uh-oh. There are no legs in this box set that fit with Howling Banshee 1. So, oh, so all those parts you just glued in? You can't, well, if you use plastic cement, it's going to be a pain in the ass getting them back. And uh, there are no legs that fit in the box. So perish, die. And so then you build two, three, four, and five, and it's like, you know, pretty annoying. I don't know why they do that. Like, if it were me, I would just make Howling Banshee 1 have a different body and different legs. Or, if you wanted to have different chest options for the Exarch, um, just make it to where you can pick which chest you want as the Exarch, and then none of the other uh, recipes require you to use the chest piece that you never used, right? Like, it, it's just dumb. Like, I mean, seriously, if you're a new player, or you've never built Howling Banshees before, how are you supposed to know, hey, don't build the first howling banshee that you see because then you'll lose the parts fucking idiot like uh, i don't know i don't like it 
And I I'm gonna complain about it too. Blood of the Phoenix was an expensive box set when it came out. I, it's more expensive now because it's out of print, but like, when I bought it, that was an expensive fucking thing. And so it's like you spend a lot of money on something, and then like some basic piece of like quality control is just like not there. On like one of the central aspects of the box. Like the whole thing is Howling Banshees versus Incubi. That's it. That's like, that's the box set. It's like you have Howling Banshees, a Howling Banshee leader, Incubi, an Incubi leader, and vehicles for both. So, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's whack, as you would describe. I, I would say it's pretty wacky. I'm not a big fan. Um, we'll, we'll do it like this. We'll do ramen. Ramen's a good, like, nice, neutral mystery to just uh, hang out in. Uh, plus one luck. You'll love to see that. Oh, right. We have... Um, Masafumi. We can let Masafumi go. I don't care. A plus one perception. That's better than a Masafumi. I'll, I'll take plus one luck. I'll take plus one perception. Pretty happy about that. I think that if you want uh, some nice Mizuki tech, uh, I would definitely recommend you not do uh, Eerie Eels first if you, are try if you have an ally that you like I would recommend doing Eerie Eel second. Like, go in to the first mystery, level up, go into Eerie Eels, get your two allies when Kana leaves you, and then when Kana comes back, you got uh, you got four allies. Very nice. But, because uh, we could have had more. We could have had more allies there, I think. Actually, is that true? Yeah, because, yeah, we could have had four allies instead of three. Very sad. I don't know why I just took Doom when I just spent so much to reduce the Doom. I, I don't know. We're, we're just, uh, we're just hanging out. We're just balling. You know, I have two modes, balling and balling. <laughs> I will say, though, that uh, I haven't bought a GW kit in a while. I am looking into the, like, Night Haunt, because I think the ghosts are really cool. I don't know if I, I would play, though, right? Like, I might just try one-page rules, because I'm still kind of upset about the whole Grey Knights Codex thing, you know? Like... I was like, all right, I'm going to play the new edition of 40k, and I'm going to get this army. And I get this army, I get a faction color scheme, which is more than I do like 90% of the time. I get a coherent faction color scheme, I get a lot of paint on models, most of my Grey Knights are, have paint on them. Not just Zenithal, but like actual paint. Um, and then I'm like, oh boy, I can't wait to uh, actually like play. And then I get my Grey Knights codex in the mail. And it's like, oh, it's, um, it's all out of date. Before, before, before the Grey Knights Codex ships to me, like I buy it and then I'm waiting for it in the mail. Before it even gets to me, it's out of date. And so I have this book. It's a really cool book. Don't get me wrong. But the rules, the rules just aren't valid anymore. So it's like you buy this fucking $50 book, 30 pounds, 50 bucks, and you you buy this thing, and it's just like, oh my god. Like, it, it's out of date before you can even get it. And like, have y'all heard about what's going on with the fucking Imperial Guard, the, the Cadia thing? So there's a, a, a guard rule set that came with the, uh, like the, you know, there's like a guard codex or whatever that came with the thing. Just do it big. Just do it big. We never miss. Ah, shit. She did miss this one time. Uh, it's unfortunate, but she did miss. But like, so the, the guard codex is like, I, I don't know if it's a codex or if it's just like the rules that came with the box set, but people who got that, I, I actually should look this up, but it was like a, it's like a big thing. Was it an actual codex? 
I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but it was the it's the new Imperial Guard thing. Uh, let's see. New releases? Cadia stands. Yeah, Cadia stands! So does this come with a codex? Yeah, it does. It comes with Codex Astra Militarum. So, I don't think the Astra Militarum Codex is out right now. Like, if I go to Astra Militarum... That's Mechanicus. If I go to Militarum, I don't think the Codex is out. Like, uh, how about I just type Codex? It's not there. The only way to get this Codex, I believe, is through the box set. And... The thing is, <laughs> the thing is, yeah, they're not selling a codex on the official GW website. The only way to, the only codex for Astra Militarum that they're selling is in the Cadia Stands box set. Now, <laughs> this codex that is exclusively at this point in this box set, Games Workshop has come out and said that you can't use it in competitive. And the Codex is also out of date. So the Collector's Edition exclusive Codex with gloss art and limited edition soft touch cover. Like, this is apparently out of date. <laughs> Before, like, there, like, you have to buy the $200 box set to get this book. And you... <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucked. Like, hold on. We're, we're doing... This is a stun lock, okay? Cadia stands codex out of date. Is the codex not legal yet? Oh, boy. Tournaments prohibit the new codex. That that's great. That's wild. But yeah, anyways. That's uh that's not great. Like, I, I don't like that. You know, like the miniatures are great. Really expensive. Like, I, I was looking into the Night Haunt, right? And I might want to play them. But, like, looking at, at the, the Night Haunt through the GW website, right? It's just very expensive. Like, y your core... Like, your HQ choice that you really want is only available as a part of an $80 bundle of three models. And you only need the one guy. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's nice. That's great. The models are so beautiful, though, you know? That's the thing that's so sad about it, is that these ghosts are so fun. Like, I, I actually... They, they, they look so cool. They look so fucking awesome. These are some of the coolest ghosts I've ever seen in my life. And, and these are just, like, generic dudes who are, like, your bread-and-butter infantry. And it's like, they're they're badass ghosts, and I think they're awesome. And I would love to, like, actually try them, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I would, uh, you know. I, I don't know if I, I'd want to get it through GW. And I, I don't know if I'd want to buy, I don't know if I'd want to buy a book. Maybe Age of Sigmar is better. Like, I don't know if Age of Sigmar is better, but, like, anytime I look at any Warhammer rules shit, it's just so, like, oh my god. Like, it just seems so bad that I don't even want to bother with it most of the time. I should have rested, like, several times. Went up to 45% doom. Heart of Darkness. Ugh. I vaguely remember what's going on here. Cape, Botany, Mermaids. Uh, we could do a little botany for fun. Yeah, you want to do a little botany for fun? I'm down. Because we don't have roads closed yet, so we might as well. But yeah, I really love the, the hobby in Warhammer, and I want to get, like, I want to get active in it. Like, I want to play games, but it's like, I don't know if I want to play 40k, because 40, 40k just looks miserable at the moment. 
Like, I absolutely hate the idea of buying a codex. Like, I mean, seriously, like, I bought the Grey Knights codex and then I got owned immediately. It's like, oh. Not only is the things that I like from the old Grey Knights codex gone, my, my teleporting land raider, my beloved, but also, you know, uh, the codex is outdated before it even arrived at my fucking place. That's insane. Like, I, they should just make the rules digital. They should. They, they should literally just make the rules digital. That's it. Just make the rules digital so that you, you, you just pick them up. Uh, Jesse, we gotta cook. Let's go. This is champagne. Holy shit. We can heal three reason whenever we want to. That's pretty cool. I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm pretty down with healing three reason. I'm a three reason enjoyer. But you know, once I get um I think I'm waiting uh like I I'm really torn up about the 3D printing thing. Because 3D printing is so fucking cool and I would love it. But I just don't I'm very concerned about the safety. Like I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm actually extraordinarily concerned about the safety. I, I think that that's something that a lot of people just don't really talk about. And it is pretty concerning. Like, you don't, like, resin is a toxic substance and it produces fumes and vapors that are harmful to you. And so, I can really only see me doing it. I, there. Like, every time I've thought about 3D printing, there's always these practical problems that I feel like I have to overcome before I pull the trigger on getting one. Now, in the, um... As far as the financials go, it's one of the cheaper ways to hobby, for sure. Like, okay, let, let's say you wanted to go fucking insane, right? And buy, like, a, an 8K printer, okay? Like, just like an 8K printer. Like, you, you just hit the gritty. You, you just you just get a little nuts, okay? Well, let's let's go to what is it? Frozen, Frozen, 3D printer. I'm spelling the brand name wrong, but they've got like some nutty. They they've got like some nutty 8K printer, right? Yeah, the uh, the mini 8K. That's like uh, how much is it? Oh God, I hate their website. It looks horrible. It's just gray. It's like, okay, um, there's the 3D printer, there's where it's shipping to, and then here are add-ons which have prices, but I don't, I, I, I don't care about that. What I care about is, wh where's the price? I actually have no idea what the price is. Because it's like the, the resin, the LCD, the frame tape, these are all add-ons, these don't come with the thing. The screen protector, and the NFET film. And then it says add to cart. But how much does it cost? I don't- I don't know! Um, is this the same one? It's a new- it's a recommended product, and it's a new link. Okay, I- So I clicked the link, it took me to a new URL, but it's the same thing. Okay. $700. That's crazy, alright? That's a shit ton of money. But- when a, what is it, like a 2,000 point Games Workshop army, depending on what you're playing, could set you back between like, you know, probably like 200 to $600, depending on what faction it is. You buy a, uh, you, you buy a $700 printer of $50 bottle of resin, and then you can print like an entire army for that bottle of resin and then you so you you can print like entire forces for just like fifty dollars and not to mention you're not restricted from just one company you can print whatever the hell you want you can print any fantasy or sci-fi miniature that somebody made an stl file for so it's just like you know one 3d printer you know that's a small one right like you you could get a um let, let's do, like, a mighty 4K. The the mighty part is, like, it's a big build plate, right? It's like, uh... Well, I have no idea how expensive it is, 
because I have no idea where the price is on the website, because Frozen is incredibly esoteric and confusing, because they list the price of the add-ons, and then they let you add it to the cart. I don't know. Like, I, I don't mean to be rude. Could you just tell me how much the thing costs? Like, I... I, I know you want to be, like, the cool guy who's like, well, if you have to ask how expensive it is, it's too expensive for you. Shut up. It's that... I just want to know the price, because I'm trying to make a point here. But basically, the... The Mighty version has a big build plate, like a big one. It's a big machine. So, the Mini is for, like, printing heroes and characters, or, if you want to, armies, but it would take a little bit longer. And then the Mighty is for printing, like, squads, armies, large creatures, you know, that sort of thing. And so, this is probably cheaper, I think. Yeah. I, I would I would hope it is. I don't know. Can I just go to, like, Elegoo or something? Like, does Elegoo actually show you their prices? I'm pretty sure they do. I, the one that I'm gonna buy is most likely gonna be an Elegoo one. Yeah, why? why how, how hard is it, man? Like, Elegoo just has the prices right there. You, you can get a, a Saturn 2 for... Saturn 2! For, uh, 600 bucks. Yeah, fuck it. Like, the, the Saturn is the big one, so it's got the big build plate, so you, you use it to build squads, you use it to build big monsters, like, yeah. Like, 600 bucks? Like, legitimately. Like, if you're playing one of the more expensive armies, like Gene Stealer Cults, or, uh, you know, basically an army that uses a lot of miniatures and it's a newer line, Gene Stealer Cults is the best one, uh, you're, you're probably looking to drop in, like, 600 bucks for your army. So you could buy a 3D printer for 600 bucks, and I know this might seem like something where it's like, oh, just don't buy, just don't buy your coffee every day, and then and don't buy your new iPhone, and you can afford the cool thing. No, this is like, if you're gonna spend 600 dollars on a recreational activity, you could spend it on something that you could spend it on a GW army, or you could spend it on a 3D printer. And the 3D printer, I mean. It kind of hits different, honestly. So, like, yeah, I, I think I would rather spend, like, 650 bucks on a 3D printer, and I can print anything, and I can print as many fantasy or sci-fi armies as I want, and instead of just having to, you know, uh, spend $600 on miniatures that uh, Games Workshop is going to periodically uh, take in and out of uh, relevancy. To the point where sometimes I will just put them on the shelf and look at them for years, and then other times I will just, uh, you know, use them for, like, the, the one game that I occasionally play. <laughs> From a hobbyist perspective, as somebody who just wants to build and paint and stuff like that, it's uh, more appropriate, I guess you could say, to uh, to want to get a 3D printer. 33% chance. Yo, what up? 50% chance. Uh... This is Doom, this is Sanity, it doesn't matter. Bottoms up. Okay, we're just gonna get out of here, go up to 61% doom, be very happy. But yeah, so anyways, 3D printers are a great value proposition, you know? They're absolutely phenomenal. Great for people who want to play war games, great for people who want to do tabletop stuff. Just in general, absolute... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold on. Um. Uh... Uh, we're we're a little bit worried here. The 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 sweat, we're 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 starting to sweat this just a little bit, and we fucking died. Um, I I delayed a lot, so honestly, that's gonna be the episode for today. Hopefully, it wasn't too boring, but yeah, three D printers are a, are a great value proposition. 
no matter what you're using them for, whether it be tabletop RPGs or, uh, you know, wargaming. And they provide you with a fantastic variety of stuff. And, and the people, like, making 3D sculpts are incredibly creative. And, of course, I want to try to eventually do that as well. It's something that I'm actively working towards to be able to figure out how to 3D model stuff. So, you know, it's just like... It's a great value proposition. And it allows me to focus on doing, like... You know, being able to print some random thing and think, oh wow, that's cool. And then I print it, then I paint it, and all that, and it's really cool. The problem, though, is that I think it's dangerous, inherently. And I don't want ten years from now to die because my lungs were poisoned by resin fumes, right? So, the first practical problem is figuring out how to print safely. And so, for me, that is an enclosure with a, um, I always get my terminology mixed up, but the air pressure that pulls air in to the enclosure, right? So, the idea that I had was a grow bed, or like a grow tent, or whatever it's called. And it has positive air pressure, so it's pulling air in to the grow tent. And then that is hooked up to a like little vent that then just it's just like some scrimblow vent you can lie on the floor, right? It doesn't really matter. You put the vent there onto the grow tent, and then you basically have a window sort of like cutout thing where it essentially keeps the window closed, but, I mean, you technically have the window open, but it keeps the window closed, and you have it... Oh, hello. Can I come in? Oh, sorry. Suddenly, somewhere, Emmerdale seems to have disappeared. We'll go back to it as soon as we can, once we've found it. Who thought I would just end the video uh, at the Emmerdale? You were wrong. Of course I'm going to keep talking about some random thing that I'm obsessed with, even though I'm going to end the video in like a minute. So here's the deal. Where was I? I don't know when it cut out. The problem is... that... I do not know how to make the window block insulated. Because something that's very important is how well your building can sort of, like, contain heat, I guess? Does that make sense? Uh, something about, like, I heard, of, I heard it was actually about windows themselves, and some windows are really, uh, so, some windows kind of hurt that regard. But, like, I want to be able to get some sort of window block that basically is as, well, maybe not as good as the window, because that seems a little ambitious, but good enough that it can keep the heat, like, that I could have, like, the heater on or the air conditioner on, and it wouldn't be, like, really bad, right? And so I, I don't really know what to look into for that specifically, uh, but that's just something to, that you have to, like, figure out. Because here's the thing, I, <laughs> I don't have a basement that I could drill like a fucking vent into and then make like a dedicated 3d printing room that exhausts into the outside i wish that'd be pretty based maybe in the future so anyways thanks for watching stay safe out there uh i'll, I'll think of something because i mean it's just like the idea of a 3d printer is just so fucking good that you want to work around these practical implications because here's the thing I don't want these fumes I, I don't want these fumes or particles like fucking me up like 10 years from now that'd be pretty that'd be pretty sad and here's the thing is there's not there's not really a lot of data about it because 3d printers have always been for like a long time they've always been like a very corporate thing you know, and when they were in sort of like exclusively for corporation use, the people who were working with those 3D printers, they like most likely those rooms were 
like isolated environments with their own sort of like air conditioning pumping them out and like most likely when those employees went in there probably had safety gear on including like disposable gloves uh like coats like or like lab coats or whatever you know uh some sort of like ma probably masks definitely masks so it's just like i don't know i think people are too I mean, whenever something gets to consumer use, people are like, oh, if it can be used by consumers without any formal training, then that must mean it's perfectly safe. And then it's like, eh, you know, maybe it's not. Who knows? Who, who knows? Uh, stay safe out there. Have a good one. Bye.